You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Hell's Kitchen After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hell's Kitchen After Show. Right. You know what that sound means. Thursday night is Hell's Kitchen night. Welcome to the number one Hell's Kitchen after show. Uh. Yow. My name is Leo Quinones. I'm a host, but I'm really a Hell's Kitchen fan, right? Season 12, five chefs remaining. What are some of those headlines? Well, we learn Joy's favorite bathroom literature. We find out that Scott and Jason have a need, a need for speed. Rochelle slices her thumb off. Sickening. Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man says, and I quote, of witnessing Gordon Ramsay in action in Hell's Kitchen. I've never seen anything like it. But tonight's story is Joy's story. It's all about Joy. This was her episode, for better or for worse, and it's incredible that you have embraced this Hell's Kitchen After Show. I want to thank you very much for downloading us on iTunes in over 60 countries. Um, We are humbled. So if you know someone who's a fan of Hell's Kitchen, you tell them right now on the show live, talking about her experience with Gordon Ramsay and the hell that is Hell's Kitchen. Joy Parham Thomas. Joy, you're on with me. Thank you so much for being on the Hell's Kitchen After Show. Thank you for having me. It's always fun. It's always fun. It's just me and you tonight, but it's cool. So we're just going to have even more fun. It's okay. It's it's just uh, going to be me and you. I would like to go back a couple weeks, if I may, Joy. Mm-hmm. Or do I have to call you Miss December? Well, <laughs> no, just call me Joy. Oh, gosh, just call me Joy. <laughs> I'm a simple woman. Just call me Joy. So, but you can get the calendar. That's right. And and, and look at me every December. You <laughs> have you are a you have a play, twelve seasons of Hell's Kitchen. That means twelve different chefs with twelve different dishes, and you've earned the right to be Miss December with your dish. I had Rock on the show last week. Did you hear what Rock season three champion said about you? No, I actually didn't get a chance to listen to the show last week. Oh. I'm, I'm normally a week behind on uh-huh. my listening and viewing activities okay. <laughs> with everything. Um, life is a little hectic nowadays. As the season picked up, I yeah. got a, a really busy. Let me paraphrase. He said that your dish was some of the best tasting food he's ever had. And the thing that I want to go back to three episodes ago, Joy, is that you were doubting yourself about that dish. Um, And you also had that same situation with some pork that you thought was undercooked that Chef Ramsay thought was beautifully cooked. Do you think in hindsight now that you shouldn't be double, you know, uh, really doubting your food and your abilities? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, to sit back and watch it, you know, sometime later, you you grow from it. I mean, as soon as I walked out those doors, I already knew that it was one of those decisions I couldn't just dwell on. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't doubt my decisions anymore in the kitchen. I'm I'm learning that every mistake is just a, a new chance to experiment and kind of fix it and work a new recipe out. But I was I was younger, like I wasn't. My mind, my state of mind wasn't as strong. Mm-hmm. I, I I was I am a strong person. I've always been a strong person, but I was still growing. So I just wasn't really certain about my abilities because I was looking at the people around me that were on the line every day and came out of you know Ritz Carlton's and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I felt a little intimidated. Sure. You know, so I gave up on myself a little bit at times. You were the first one to get a black jacket. 
I was I was so happy. Oh, I was so happy that day. I, I, if I could have did a cartwheel, I would have, but I don't think they would have allowed it in the dining room. <laughs> but um, I was really happy because the day before in the challenge was the pork loin day, and you know I just I was really going through it. But at that time, I think I was I had cabin fever too. Hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think I had cabin fever a little bit because we've been there for a while. But, you know, I had doubted myself a little bit about a lot, actually, about the pork loin. And then, you know, it all worked itself out. But it, I was so happy that the following day I could come back and not mm-hmm. just prove to Chef Ramsey that, you know, I can still cook. I still got it. This mm-hmm. was a bad day. You know, but prove it to my peers around me also. So it, just, it was a great moment. And I needed that because I needed – for um you know the people who are watching the show today mm-hmm. certain associates uh certain family members and things like that i needed them to see that too because that's what i wanted them to understand some people just don't really respect our craft you know mm-hmm. when being in the kitchen they, they don't really they don't respect our food you know some people really look down at us so i had a point to prove to some people and when i got that black jacket i was i was happy you know i was going you guys you see it now eat it up you know when you were cooking foods that you had never cooked before on tv in hell's kitchen that's going to be tasted by you know dana rock paul these hell's kitchen alumni alumnus and then gordon ramsay as well what made you decide to cook stuff you had never cooked before you know, it's crazy because you would think for someone who I would who doubted themselves so much, I wouldn't be as confident when it came down to trying new ingredients. But um, sometimes I didn't always have like the best access to new ingredients. So to have a challenge where it was to me, I actually forgot about the calendar and everything during the challenge. We had a pantry full of whatever you could dream of, and the goal was really just to cook and. When they mentioned the month, I just thought about the holiday season, you know, warm flavors and um, comforting flavors and stuff like that, Uh, warm tones, yams, and, you know, Mm -hmm. earthy flavors. And I just went with my instinct and I cooked, and I didn't want to – I didn't want to stick to my own norm. I didn't want to get caught in a routine while I was there at Hell's Kitchen. Every challenge should have been a challenge for me. So no two challenges. I I could do two two dishes that were similar. I didn't even want to do that. I wanted to go in different directions each time because that was the only way I was going to learn. Yeah. That's the only way Chef was going to learn about me. And, you know, my team was going to learn about me. And I... Each time, you know, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But for the most part, it really did work out in my favor. I can't say it didn't. <laughs> All right, we're talking now, Joy. Let's get um, dive right into the, tonight's episode. Right from the beginning, uh, there was the, you know, Keisha went home. That had to hurt you. Yeah, I mean, that hurt a little bit. Uh-huh, um, okay. <laughs> it, hurt, it, it did, but it wasn't really, like, the source of my frustration. But it is definitely hard to lose someone that you kind of build like a sisterly bond with because it's it's hard to keep a friend in the, in a competition. You sure. know, you guys are all fighting for a prize there, but the good thing about the relationship that me and me and Keisha had was that um I could confide in her and I didn't I wasn't I didn't feel ashamed to say like I'm really messing up or I'm having a bad day or I felt overwhelmed. So, you know, I maybe at that moment during tonight's service, I, maybe I felt like I just needed that sister to talk to real quick or something like that. Like, hey, girl, you know, yeah. girl, I'm stressed to the max. Right. Hold me. I need a hug or something like that. I didn't have it. So maybe that could have been a part of it. But, I mean, losing Keisha, it, it, I went to sleep, like, extremely motivated. Like, yeah, I'm going to pull through for my girl. But for some reason, that next day, it, I, it was a different type of, I don't know how I woke up the next day. I was in a, a totally different space. Let's talk about that next day. That next day, you did wake up, and then you come into Hell's Kitchen in all kinds of disarray. So you know something weird is happening. Uh, so take it from there, tonight's episode, when you saw all that junk inside Hell's Kitchen. Relive it for us. Okay, so we get up early you know you guys don't know that you guys never know what time of day it is because we have the windows in here i don't know if anybody noticed that by watching the show okay so it's Tell very us. early okay so we wake up and there's like fancy trash all over the dining room that's what i'll call it um and you know these guys come out and they look pretty familiar they i believe they were on america's got time i'm not sure uh-huh. but um they come out and they start banging on things and you know it's like wait whoa what's going on so then we just move right into a challenge so i 
it, it, maybe that day I just couldn't keep up or something. Everything was full speed ahead. But it, I, I enjoyed the presentation because I, I like dancing. The As we all know, I like to dance. Yeah, so you know, what? I was <laughs> I was jigging up there a little bit, just a little bit. It seems like these uh, Hell's Kitchen presentations are always a little bit over the top with the junk in the trunk band, uh, the stream, uh, the street drum corpse. So you had 30 minutes to cook with leftovers. Uh, are you good with leftovers when you're outside of Hell's Kitchen, Joy? I'm pretty good with leftovers. Um, that just I don't. I'm pretty good with them. This wasn't my crowning moment, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm typically pretty good with them because you know, in in our field. We're going to use everything. Well, that's what I'm going to do in my kitchen. I'm using everything. Mm -hmm. Me, my staff, whoever's working underneath me, that's what we're going to do. Everything we can use as long as we're not going to kill anybody by oh, using it. I like we it. We need to use it. <laughs> so, you know, I, and that's just my motto because we want to keep overhead down. You know, uh -huh. food costs and labor costs are high. Look so, at you. Yeah, I definitely will use a leftover. Not Run a it like a business, young lady. <laughs> it is a business, okay? Uh -huh. Chef Ramsey never lied. <laughs> right on, right on. So you chose a chicken. So take us to uh, you cooking your leftovers and how you felt about it from beginning to end? Well, I, um, when I grabbed the chicken, chicken was the only protein I hadn't worked with yet on the challenge. So that's why I grabbed the chicken crown. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a little tricky because we had to work with a certain amount of ingredients for that challenge. So I think I just was having a hard time really merging everything to, together and making one cohesive dish. It just... I, I couldn't really get it together that day. I, I, I think what really messed me up, though, was going for the chicken that day. I, uh -huh. I think I played it too safe <laughs> with my protein, and it kind of it left me in a, a stagnant place, place with my side dishes because I didn't want to have a side dish that was so overpowered with the flavors that it, it took away from the chicken because, you know, it's such a light and delicate thing. But yeah. So I just, I really wasn't focused. I wasn't focused at all when I was thinking about putting that dish together. To watch the episode, I can really see it now. I can't remember it until tonight, but okay. I can see. I was not very focused. All right, so the judge from Better Homes and Gardens Magazine. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is a classic. This is classic joy. Starts off with the right thing to say. Oh, I love reading Better Homes and Gardens magazine. And she perked up. The judge, yeah, you do. And then, <laughs> what did you say exactly? Well, I said it's, it's a perfect bear from literature. Um, I do, but I do read the magazine, believe it or not. But, I mean, it was, it was an honest uh. statement. I think it was a little too candid. <laughs> It's, uh, the, the magazine gravitates. It, it goes from the mailbox <laughs> to the to the coffee table to the dining room table, and somehow or another it makes its way upstairs. But you know, maybe I should have just told her that we read it in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Chef's face? He just like he, just... he, he looked at me like he couldn't believe it. He just he didn't understand what was going on. And you don't you didn't want to you know you were just trying to speak from the heart, and all of a sudden it just maybe wasn't the right thing to say, right? Yeah. I I think I show, you know, I was a, I was being a fan, but it just, I didn't do it well. I wasn't a good fan at that point in time. I she was saying. <laughs> well, a pretty incredible, uh, funny moment in Hell's Kitchen history. And uh, before we get to the night, you and Melanie reacting <laughs> to Rochelle's thumb injury. Oh. Uh now, they, they showed a close-up on Hell's Kitchen, but you were there. How bad was it, Rochelle's cut? Well, when she cut, <laughs> when she cut herself, you could really hear it. Uh. You know, so when I was in the sink, I could hear something go slice, and it wasn't the pumpkin. Uh. And the tip of the thumb... It blended in with the pumpkin and the seeds and things that were on the butcher block because everything was a, like a, a beige tone. Ugh. So everything was kind of blended in. <laughs> and uh. when we finally saw what was on the table, <laughs> it to me it looked it looks maybe we were we were probably overly dramatic, but it seemed so big when oh. we saw it that day. It it seemed like so much stuff. You know, first thing to do you call the medic. I don't know. I thought the girl was going to pass out. It, just, it was too much. I was freaked us out. I couldn't. Me and Mel. And, and Melanie wasn't any help because she was just as scared of it as I was. Just as terrified. Oh, my God. And how long did this uh, debacle take? A couple of minutes? It took a while. The thumb 
the tip sat there for a while. I think Chef James actually had to come tell us that it was time to get back to work mm. because, well, we had to get it off the butcher block and we had to clean everything down. Mm. That was the issue. Uh, That's what took up the bulk of the time, uh, getting over to it. Did you have any injuries in Hell's Kitchen? I don't remember. Um. Yeah, I actually, did not, I mean, they didn't really show them or anything. I, I didn't have to go to a medic or anything like that. Like, you know, I wasn't rushed out. But I burnt myself twice. Um, The first night there, the first episode, I burnt my knuckle real mm. bad. I had a bad blister. They actually decided to bust the day. We had to go pick carrots in the field. That was nice. Oh, my God. So you're not only being punished, but you had to pop a blister on your knuckle. Oh, I felt it. It was, it was oozing in my glove. Oh. Weird experience. Oh. Horrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that your worst punishment in Hell's Kitchen history that you remember? No, 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 no. The worst punishment was, um, no, it wasn't the worst because I do like doing, like, you know, recycling. But <laughs> Oh, my God, that was gross. I wish they would have. Sh- it was a funny moment. It was embarrassing, but it was a funny moment. At one point in time, I sat down in the garbage. Oh, no. And there's, a t- like, a half a tomato stuck on my butt. <laughs> and the camera, so one of the camera guys probably did get it. But, I mean, they didn't show it. I'm happy they didn't show it, but I, that was probably the worst because I was paranoid. I'm like, I hope they don't show this. I hope they don't <laughs> These tomatoes taste like ass. I don't get right. it. What, what flavor? This is what flavor is this? It's different. It's organic. Uh, what was your greatest reward moment in Hell's Kitchen that you can remember, Joy? My greatest reward moment. Um, I think all of them were pretty great. You know. What were some of them? But um, I think the the best reward moment was um. What the when we went to Vegas? I really enjoyed that moment because I got to meet. Um, well, when I got to shop, you know, that, uh-huh. that's always fun. I sure. got to shop, and I got to do it on someone else's dime, so it was great. And I got to get out the kitchen, and I had I had never went to Vegas. You know, I'm over here on the East Coast, so it, Vegas is not a hop, skip, and a jump away. <laughs> so um, I got a chance to go to Vegas. You know, I had a room with a great view, and I got a chance to eat with um, Chef Guy Savoy, and that was just, that dinner was amazing. And they had a bread and butter tasting, and I love bread. So that was the best. A that bread and butter like, tasting, huh? It was like they rolled out carts of gold in front of me. Oh, um, my I, goodness. I went crazy. But, I mean, that uh, my black, uh, when I got the black check, Jacket, that was nice too. It was nice to sit down and have lunch. But, but you did meet <laughs> you know, Christina. I think that was the best part to really be able to sit back and relax. I think you met season 10 winner Christina too. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I met her in Vegas, yeah. And how was that meeting her? It was really nice. She's really cool. She's like really chill, mellow, much more reserved than I. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's really cool. She gave great words of advice, you know, words that I still live by. You know, she's the one who says cook with confidence. And I still, I mean, I had, I was doing it, and then I stopped. I put it on pause, but I'm doing it again, you know. I had a moment when I was there, but I, I just brushed myself off and kept on rolling. Okay. So yeah, Christina's really, she's really, really nice. Nice. Well, now let's get into what we all love about Hell's Kitchen, uh, the dinner service. I love when Gordon says, Jean-Philippe, it's time to open up Hell's Kitchen. Let's go. And then the music comes on. <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, it sounds like, uh, like Gladiator or something. Yes. Like when it all happens with those the doors open. It's like they open up the gates to the stadium. And you get in there, and then Stan Lee of Marvel fame, Iron Man, Hulk, uh, we know him. Okay, so let's let's break down the dinner service, because now you're not a red team or a blue team. You're a black jacket team. Um, how did it feel, you five, gearing up for tonight's dinner service? Well, going into dinner service that night, I mean, we... We were okay. Um, Without Rochelle, you thought. You know, you, you didn't see her to the last second, right? Yeah, she got there basically at the, the, I mean, the very beginning of dinner service. You know, people were coming in and stuff like that. So she got there right on time, which was nice to have another body in the building. Mm-hmm. That, that's always great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, dinner service, the, the feel in the air was pretty... There was there was a, a feeling of anxiety in the air, I think, from everyone because there were only five people there. Mm-hmm. So so there was a slight tense, intensity in the air, but I, everything was pretty okay. Um, it, was what, a, it was a regular night in Hell's Kitchen, to at, be honest. At what t- 
time of day were you given the role of fish station? An hour before, 30 minutes before, right before, all day long? Because were you apprehensive about it? Were you dreading it? Were you ready to conquer it? What were your feelings about taking on the fish station in the final five? Well, I didn't, I didn't get my station assignment until right before dinner service. That's how it goes. But, okay. Um, <clears throat> I had a feeling I was going to be on fish that night, and I think I may have worked myself up a little bit too much because I know that my first dinner service there was at the fish station. I think maybe I, uh, I just I kind of did it to myself. I scared myself a little bit mm -hmm. because I, I figured I would be there. It was only right that I would have went on the fish station. How many nights can you avoid the fish station there for, what, 15 weeks? Right, so right, it was, right. It was time for me to go on the back to the fish station and, and deal with it. Um, what are, what, but that's what, when you find out. Like it's, it's not a big window of time. Tell me about what you fear when you're on the fish station, when Gordon Ramsay is about to, you know, rip your head off. I mean, because he wants it perfect, and the, the fish is a very delicate thing. So was it just basically, was it inexperienced, Joy, on, on the different kinds of textures of fish? Was that what, what kind of got inside your head a little bit? Um, no, it wasn't that time. It, it wasn't, that's not what it got, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm moving around, so I don't even know what I'm saying right now. But um, It's okay. It, it wasn't the inexperience, you know, with different kinds of fish. I was, I'm pretty familiar with fish, but... <laughs> I think it was just that when you consistently see people crash and burn on the fish station, yeah, it it builds this this pressure. You mm -hmm. know, you kind of it just builds this pressure. That's that's really all that happened. It wasn't like, oh no, it's fish. I can't cook the fish. I, I understand salmon. I understand halibut. You know, the scallop thing is under control. So it, it just was. I think I, it just was. Okay. Self-made anxiety. It seems like to me, um, from what the edited version that we all at home saw, saw mm -hmm. that there was a communication breakdown. Do you feel that's fair? Do I feel what the version that you guys saw is yeah. fair? Yeah. I mean, it's as fair as they can be. I, don't, I didn't need them to make a two-part episode out of it, so it's okay. It would have been a little too much. Mm, <laughs> so yeah, that's true. That's fine. I understand. Editing will be editing. You know, but... There, there was a communication breakdown that night, and um, I mean, it confused me. I really got baffled, uh, and I, I saw that a little bit actually watching the show tonight. Like I knew I wasn't going crazy. I had, I kind of almost reminded myself of that tonight. But um, I just, it was like I, I couldn't understand what the. It was too much. Things were moving too fast. Things were being called in a, in a different way. I guess you would say we weren't flowing the way we typically did. Something was just off. It was off balance. Do you think that you, in your heart of hearts, were was doing a little bit of sassing back to Gordon Ramsay, or did you were just kind of like throwing your hands up going, I don't know. It sounded a little like you were sassing him back. Um, I could have been at that point from when you see it, because that, that went on for a while. That wasn't my first time up there talking to Chef Ramsey that night. Mm. Um, but I was I was actually a little irritated because during dinner service, I had some technical issues um, at my station. I had some issues with, like, um, the burner or whatever. Sure. I don't know. Maybe I knocked the switch off. I don't know. Oh. I, all right. Yeah, so I, w I was I was trying to tell him that things were coming, but I, I wasn't having a chance to get it out. So I was just getting really frustrated because I felt like he wasn't listening to me. Yeah. Um. So you know, so that that's really what that was, and it was like he was asking me. It was just moving too fast. He was asking me for things, but then he was telling me not to bring things. But he was asking me for the same things. He was telling me not to give them. I didn't, I didn't even know what was going on. I got lost. You're I, getting sassy just, right now. <laughs> Hey, let me let me see. Let me read this quote back to you that you said in tonight's episode in the confessional. Here you go, Joy. Uh, let's see. It's something like this. Whatever, Chef. If you think that I'm holding up the whole kitchen and I'm slowing everything down, how about I leave and you have someone else work fish station? Now, tell me about your strategy in the confessional at that exact moment in your life. Well. You have to remember this straight this confessional comes well, you know. We're not even gonna talk about all that. You know how that works. But um You can break so it at down that for point us. In time when I'm in confessional, I'm still in my like I'm still in uh pride prideful mode, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Because I haven't I haven't um been upstairs yet or anything like that. You know, I haven't really 
made it too far out of the kitchen. It was a it was a pretty quick thing. So at that point in time, I'm in my mind. I I still want to be tough and and not cry and. You know, I don't want to look too soft. That that was my strategy, I guess you would say. But it, it's not really who I am. We, from watching the show, we all know I'm very sensitive. I know you're sensitive. Okay, I've seen you do it a couple of times. Um, you are in the heat of battle in Hell's Kitchen. You're a soldier. Gordon Ramsay is your general. I get that. But you, you get this, um, you know, the veins pop out, and, and you clench your fists, and you're really, really intense, and then you're clashing with Gordon. Tell me about the clash and then your ultimate decision to walk out. Well, I think that night I just felt like it was, an, it was, a, it was enough people crashing and burning in the kitchen that evening where I didn't need all of the attention. Mm-hmm. I felt I kind of felt like I was being targeted a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, it, it is the game, name of the game. So I should have been able to deal with it better at the time, but I didn't. And um, I just, I really didn't like that. So, um, of course, with editing, you don't see everything that is said. Mm-hmm. But there was a statement, which I, I can't really necessarily repeat because they didn't show it. But it just kind of was the one that set me off and was like, I just, I don't have time for this. I can't take it anymore. Because I was already uh, tired, like just drained um, physically, mentally, emotionally. I had kind of already got to my max being out there. So it just was. It, my skin wasn't as tough anymore. When you go back and look at that scene, when Gordon came after you, he left service. He went after you in the kitchen. I think in my heart of hearts, he was coming back to tell you to keep going. Um, do you think he was coming to tell you to keep going? Or uh, as far as the com- did Gordon come to tell you to come back to the competition? Or did Gordon come out there to tell you to go home? What do you think Gordon was doing? I don't quite know. You know, I've had quite. I've had a long time to think about this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when when you have an exit that's so dramatic, it, it replays on your mind. It replays a lot. So I've I've thought about this for a while. But you know, I feel like maybe he wanted me to say I want to come back, but I wasn't sure. That's I didn't what he wanted. It's, if it's, I could even Joy, you're say, good. You're, you're, can, you're I, good. can I come back? I'm sorry. How do I make this up? Like, oh. you had my jacket back. I don't, I didn't know what to do. So I just, I really just, that's when I really gave up. I, I think because at that point, I, I felt it when he came out there. And even when I talked to Chef Andy a little bit, but I just didn't know what to do or how to do it. Do I just barge in the dinner service? And I'm like, God, no, I can't be any more disrespectful. Hell yeah. You, you know what? I think I, just, I think Gordon sent Chef Andy to go get you back. I really think Gordon, I know he believes in you. I really think there was a one-two punch. Gordon coming to get you and Chef Andy coming to get you. And I think you're, you were so upset that you just didn't see that they were trying to reel you back in. Do you feel that now? Because I feel that. Yeah, I feel it now, you know. So feel it when you watch it now. It's like, oh, joy, come on, you know. Because it's it's like me. I know me, and I go off intuition. So it's just like I already know I'll see them again. That's not a problem, you know, because at the end of the day, I have the work ethic, but what I needed was time to mature and grow and, and you know, just become a better person because I have the ability to cook. I have the, the, the talent, you mm-hmm. know, and I had to become more confident like Chef Ramsey was telling me to do and, you know, people around me that were there. And I, I took those words. I didn't take them at that time, and I, maybe I just needed to take those words and take them home with me mm-hmm. and process it over a very long period of time. But, you know, I did. So it's like I'll, I'm becoming better. I'm being better, you know. And you never know where you'll see me yet again. Who knows? You never know. I'm not going to stop cooking. I never stopped cooking when I left the kitchen, you know. So, because I knew if I would have stopped cooking, then I really would have let Chef Ramsey down, you know. Right. That that would have been, I think that would have been the the salt on top of the wound. It just, it would have been too much, you know. Um, so, when you look back, because you filmed this 18, 19 months ago, and right. you've had a lot of time to think about your decision uh, to to leave the competition. So where are you at now, Joy, in your culinary career? Catch us up. Well, nowadays, I actually I work for myself, which is really nice. <laughs> so um, it's it's hectic, and it's busy, and it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. It's, I guess 
it's but it's fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it's a it's a lesson I had to learn from the show because at that moment I was so prideful I felt like I could do something on my own and now I have I am doing it on my own and I love it. I'm I feel blessed to have my own business. But you know, it's a job and it's a serious job and it's a lot of responsibility and I have to be able to handle myself with a lot more poise mm-hmm. and a lot more class than I did about eighteen, nineteen months ago. And I know that now and so it makes me take my business and my brand just it it makes me want to take it even farther and I I, I really cherish it. Like it's my baby. I, I couldn't walk out on this. You know, I can never walk out on something the way I walked out on that again. Mm. Well, um what did you learn from Gordon Ramsay? I learned a lot of things from Chef Ramsay, honestly. I really did. But I think one of the biggest things that I learned about Chef Ramsay is that, you know, and it's not even about the cooking or anything like that. It's Before going to the show, I thought that he was, like, the meanest man around. I just thought he was going to be the hardest chef I ever had to work with. But he's honestly a really great dude. Like, he has a good heart. He has a caring heart. You know, and he cared about us. You know, he cared about us as as chefs and the direction we were going in and be, and becoming better and just being our best and giving our best. So I, I definitely learned that from him. And I learned um, better ways to communicate in the kitchen from him also. I'm, I'm a lot more receptive to things in the, in the kitchen now, um, criticisms and, and everything. And it, it took a second to, to do that when I got home. It, it took a, quite some months because I think I was still in, like, this weird mode from being on the West Coast. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, eventually I got to the groove, and I just got it together, and I had to really start thinking about, like, cooking my cooking with confidence, like being at my best, giving it 100%. Like, I started channeling those moments when I was, you know, working on things with building my, my business when mm-hmm. I was feeling a little down. I would think about those moments when I won those challenges, like the potato challenge and the black jacket challenge and, you know, having that slot in the calendar and things like that. You know, all those good moments to keep me going. So I just, I think a lot differently now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, again, you know, to have you on the show uh, on this, uh, you know, infamous, what a, what a night. And, you know, uh, you're the one that everybody wants to hear from and everybody wants to hear your side of the story. Is there any part of your story that you think hasn't been said yet in regards to Hell's Kitchen? I don't think. You know, I will say whoever works in the editing, who's whoever is doing editing, I love you guys because they have they've they've done me well, they've done me justice. I can't say that they really did so much where they they made me look like a, a bad character. You know, we, sure. we all had our devious moments there, but I don't, you know, and I understood I understood that there would be a lot of chopping with tonight's episode also. So I, I'm okay with that, and I, I really I feel like they've told the story, and I I'm happy that it's been shown. I mean. Some would be embarrassed or, like, you know, want to go hide under a rock or whatever, but that's not the kind of space I'm in. I want whoever was watching it, whatever young chef, whoever is in culinary school and they may be, like, struggling that semester or something like that, don't do what Joy did. Like, you know, it's crazy. I would have to use myself as the example, but I'm okay with that, Mm -hmm. you know, as, as long as somebody else doesn't do what I did because I learned from my mistake, you know, just don't do it. Don't have to learn from a mistake. Just learn from mine. You know, so it's like... I'm I'm okay. Like it's and it's it's crazy because I was a little anxious going into tonight. I didn't want to watch the episode at eight o'clock at all. <laughs> so it was on DVR, and you know people were like reaching out through social media, and I I didn't want to look at what was being said um, through Facebook and Twitter. But the comments and the responses. I mean, honestly, everybody was was really supportive and uplifting you know and it was it was nice to see um it was really nice to see very comforting very motivating you know a little emotional i can't mm-hmm. lie mm-hmm. shed a tear yeah but <laughs> <laughs> it was nice it was nice and it's and, it, and i won't stop cooking that's, that's a, all i know how to do so listen um this show the number one Hell's Kitchen after show, the number one mm-hmm. fan show, goes all over the world. I know you're jet set, and you'll cook for anybody, from five people to 500. So, sh- Chef Joy, so mm-hmm. uh, let me get your Twitter straight. So, if, if somebody wants to reach out to you via Twitter, it's at Chef Joy HK12. That's sh- at Chef Joy HK12. And do you have a website where we can go? 
Um, the website will be up this weekend. It's nice. Actually. So you, that'll, that'll be launched this weekend. I didn't want to have all that. I'm re rebrand. I'm rebranding. I'm getting a new website. I'm really excited. Is that the right Twitter then? <laughs> Hmm? Is that the right Twitter address handle? Yeah, you got it right. You got it right. Okay. Well, listen, uh, on this night of all nights, I wanted to speak with you, and I wanted to speak with you about you, Gordon, and the experience of Hell's Kitchen, and young lady, you delivered, and keep your head up high, and thank you so much for sharing this time with us on this very, very, very uh, pivotal night in your TV career. I'm sure we're going to see you cooking again. I'm positive, Joy. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And maybe I can meet you guys sometime soon. I actually be in L.A. around the finale time, so maybe I can meet you guys. Who knows? But, um, you know, I'll you be said cooking. It. Don't worry about it. All right, maybe maybe we'll bring in, you know, the Black Jacket team. I know Melanie Finch is local. Rochelle Bergman is local. Maybe we'll get you ladies back together, and we'll talk food, we'll talk Hell's Kitchen, and we'll talk Gordon Ramsay. Is it a date? It sounds like a date. We've been planning a mini reunion anyway. All right, Joy, it's so great to talk to you. Thank you so much. I'm going to let it you go great. now. Thank All right, you. God bless. Thank you so much, Joy. We'll see you next time. Okay, All right. bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. And she is nothing but class. Uh, she left the competition today, but as you heard here on this show exclusively, uh, she's holding her, her head up high as she should. So who's left? I guess it's time for me to go over Hell's Kitchen predictions. So let's get into that, shall we? And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Freaky, producer Ben. I'll tell you that right now. Every time I hear that, I can't get used to that. Okay, so who are we looking at? The final four. Melanie Finch, Rochelle Bergman, the guys, Jason Zapaltis, and Scott Cummings. Who's going to stay? Well, I learned out tonight that Rochelle is tough, sliced a third of her thumb off, and just went and got it carterized, meaning they took some heat application and stopped the bleeding like I mean that's tough and she came back in the heat of Hell's Kitchen where the you know it's up to eight you know 600 degrees so I would have probably been crawling in a fetal position you know wincing and crying in pain so Rochelle Bergman is tough and I think she has maturity and I think she might be going to the top two uh, Melanie 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 to me had some trouble today. Uh, the capellini, the double order, the lack of cilantro, the uh, salt. Where's the salt, Chef Andy said. Uh, when that happens a couple times in this late in the game, could be a telltale sign because you have to taste, taste, taste every single dish that goes out in Hell's Kitchen. So uh, I think Jason Zapaltis is a great cook. Um, does he have what it takes to run a brigade to Gordon's standards, 40, 50, 60 line chefs. I don't know. He seems to me, he's been on the show twice, and to show you I'm not favorite, playing favorites, and Mich Melanie's been on the show, and Scott's been on the show, and Rochelle's been on the show, I think Jason and Melody are going to have a tough time breaking the top two. I think your top two are going to be... Uh, Rochelle Bergman and Scott Cummings. Scott, you saw his composed dish that is now in Better Homes and Gardens magazine, uh, the one that he made with leftovers, and he, and he just seems like he's not peaking. He seems like he's writing it better and taking Gordon's direction better in the heat of the dinner service battle, and I, I see him leveling out in a positive way, so uh, next week is going to be incredible. Be here, because I don't know who's going to be on the show. I know it's going to be somebody you want to hear from because we are the only show that brings you, the Hell's Kitchen contestants, right to the forefront. We had Chef Rock Harper last week. I mean, Rock, season three champion. Tonight, Joy was on, okay? This was Joy's last night. This is what I'm talking about. Do us a favor. If you love Hell's Kitchen, if you love this Hell's Kitchen after show, just send the link either on iTunes or on YouTube to a friend. We really appreciate that. On iTunes, if you can give us a rating, that would be sweet. We appreciate that. And thanks for checking us out on YouTube. And I have a movie recommendation for you. John Favreau in Chef. You love this show because you're a foodie. Go see John Favreau in Chef. And you can also see my 60-minute interview with John Favreau, if you go to movieinterview.com, movieinterview.com. And you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at movieinterview. It's simple, at movieinterview. Hold on, stop that music, Ben.
we don't really have a network without the amazing Maria Menounos. That's right. She has a brand new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. It's the summer, okay? Listen, if you're going to have that Sunday barbecue with the pints of beers and the baby back ribs, I get it. But afterwards, you got to check out Maria's book. So thank you very much. Thank you, Holly, for being here, darling. And thank you, Chef Ben and everybody here at After Buzz TV. I am out of here. We can start that music now, buddy. And remember, if you want Hell's Kitchen exclusive, stay here every time for the Hell's Kitchen After Show on After Buzz TV. I'm Leo Quinones. I'll see you next week for sure. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later, as Gordon would say. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.